praying for someone against his will, if monks and priests of completely different religious faiths, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Shaivism, Krishnaism, Hinduism, Jainism, Shintoism, can you even imagine how many of them are out there? Pray for a person without his request or knowledge, how does it affect his consciousness, especially if he is committed to the northern tradition? And since childhood develops himself magically, please accept my condolences, dear colleague. Well, how does it affect a person? In general, if you develop yourself in the northern tradition, then it will be similar to overcoming challenges. Because everyone is trying to virtually register you to their own channel. Maybe it will work, maybe you'll switch. All the while you're holding on for dear life to the tradition that you are faithful to. It's the test of your loyalty, your resilience, the ability to be faithful even though they are trying to separate you from this tradition, not because they hate you, but rather because they love you. See, how many people, as it turns out, dream about dragging you over to their channel, it's truly so. Now, let's leave out the humor. When someone asks on your behalf, meaning, programs your consciousness, your virtual image, virtual coding, tries to register you to a particular religious channel, it's not good, especially if you don't need it, if you never asked for it. So here, of course, there are several ways. Have a serious conversation with those who always strive for the eternal good but somehow always bring evil, as opposed to Mephistopheles who sought to do everything strictly the other way, who, while always willing the evil, was bringing about the good. So here it is the opposite, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Talk to them, like one artist to another, and basically ask them not to do that again. Although, they may not listen to you. Here's option two. Change the coding. To achieve that, usually something is done to your own name. They know you by a particular name, but you, for instance, go through initiation into the northern tradition and receive a different name. From the gods, the priest, and this way you, as if re-register yourself in this world, respond to that name, perhaps, even change the documents in the social world and do not tell anyone about it. Your secret name, in this sense, starts to protect you. Ask gods for protection. They will simply do that and won't harm other people, of course, because it would be the wrong thing to do due to the principle of free will. But they will put some type of a protective membrane around you. Cast your own protective spell, using runes, runic formulas. It works really well. Wear Thor's hammer around your neck, it will also work very well. And so on, that is to defend against them. Knowing that these people truly believe that they want to do you good. They don't understand that they are not free in their decisions, that they are governed by their systems. They're being told to recruit more people, since those systems are running out of food. Judaism, Christianity, Islam, the Abrahamic religions are based on the principle of sacrifice. Therefore, when switching you to their own channel, making such an attempt, remember, they only think that they are doing good, in reality, they are gathering sheep of the house of Israel. And the sheep of the house of Israel are being prepared for a hecatome, that is, directly to being slaughtered and burnt following this ritual. So the more they gather, the easier it will be for all of them, at least, they might manage to get away with it. For, depending on how many one had brought, that would be the amount of slaves that he shall receive. As it is said in their wonderful book of Torah. Everything that is connected to Hinduism, Shinto, Buddhism and other religions, their rule of recruitment and its necessity is slightly different, there is no slaughter, but sure enough there's no freedom there either. There you have to go through the wheel of samsara program, which is present there, and also help this system prove its own worth. Shintoism, in this case, is slightly more cheerful because it's a pagan system, although not ours, but still pagan. 
and here you can get some help. Although, Shintoism serves as the foundation for such a detestable system like Reiki, which actually does nothing good for a person, only sucking his energy and giving an illusory sense of happiness while falling victim to a certain system of individuals who, just like vampires, suck the energy from the astral body. That's why, if you've come to the Northern Channel, learn to be resilient because that's what the Northern Channel teached. Learn to be resilient, learn to be faithful, and in that sense you will be protected. So for you, perhaps, perceive this as a challenge. Think of it as a competition, as a tournament in which you participate in order to see the people and to show yourself in a fair and good fight. Don't take it seriously. If you are a warrior you will protect yourself. But if you are not capable of protecting yourself yet, then work on obtaining warrior qualities so that you are able to defend yourself. They will leave you alone when they see that they are just wasting their time trying to register you to a certain channel. They will switch their attention to a more compliant victim. On the other hand, it is unpleasant that these people are actually your loved ones. Well, what can you do, that's the time we live in right now, every man for himself. Remember that, every man for himself.